having just celebrated Halloween, it got the subject leaders and I thinking about why we celebrate Halloween and what makes us enjoy being scared in general and what actually happens when we're scared, like physically as well as emotionally. Um, so if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Amber and I'm the psychology subject leader. Um, I'm Elise and I'm the English subject leader. I'm Jo and I'm the chemistry subject leader. So Jo, what have you discovered about chemistry and being scared? Well, the amygdala is a part in the brain which plays a key role in the act of being scared. So the amygdala sends neurotransmitters to other places in the brain, and such as the hypothalamus, which controls the fight or flight response. So it determines whether or not you stay and fight your ground or flee from the scene like a damsel in distress. And so it also... Um, uh, sends, the hypothalamus then sends neurotransmitters to the um, adrenal glands which then secrete uh, adrenaline and cortisol which will increase your heart rate and your blood pressure and your respiratory rate which is why after you've just been like scared you breathe quite heavily because your like everything in your body has just gone like increased so much that then you're like trying to get everything like back to normal. Yeah, and I found similar things in kind of my research with, research with psychology, um, which is kind of all about like hormones like dopamine and those kind of types of the brain that release those hormones. So actually, when you are scared, you release hormones like, uh, like I said, dopamine, oxytocin, which are also associated with like kind of high arousal and like happy states as well. Um, and so actually, when you're scared, you actually are also feeling happy. But for some people, just the dopamine affects them in different ways. So some people get happier when they are scared and some people don't get as happy as they don't release as much dopamine. So that's why some people prefer being scared because they just generally release more of the hormone and just have a more kind of positive, excited, overall kind of feeling. And then some people are kind of just have more of a fight or flight response where it's more just kind of on edge. I was reading about um, a professor of psychology in America and he said that because fear is an evolved response, it does make sense that some people do prefer being scared and sort of some people don't because kind of in caveman times when we had to sort of fight a ground like fight a tiger or something, um, that it would make sense for some people to flee to so have kind of a preservation of the population and some people to stay and fight for the um, I don't know, the land or the resources or whatever, it kind of made sense with evolutionary biology as well. Yeah, that also so explains really well why we wouldn't necessarily like read a literary um, scary book or watch a scary movie and celebrate Halloween, because a lot of the time it sort of allows us to explore fear and very taboo things under this kind of like literary safe space. So because like it's celebrated across society or whatever, then we very much are able to kind of interact with these things that we wouldn't necessarily be able to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, all the time you find these really similar themes in Gothic literature or even in um, so scary movies. So a lot of the time themes are like the supernatural or like drugs or kind of prostitution use in London, for example, with Jekyll and Hyde. You can very much see how that very physically manifests in this notion of like being able to interact with this very sort of like marginalised aspect of society in a way which almost kind of veils you. So thank you to the subject leaders for answering our question. Um, next time we'll be exploring the question, why are some countries more powerful than others? With geography, history, politics, economics, arts and PE. So it'll be very interesting to hear what they have to say and catch us soon.